Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Jay from ShopWorks, and I want to thank you for attending our webinar today on a better way to deliver and manage customer approvals. Uh, if you've never attended one of our webinars before, just a couple bookkeeping things for you. Number one is that you can hear me, but I cannot hear you. Um, however, we do encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. And the way that you're going to do that is through the chat box. So when you logged in to go to webinar, there's a chat box. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please ask them. And then I'll reserve some time at the end of the presentation to answer those questions. The other thing is that this webinar is recorded and we will send out uh, details to you of the recording and where it resides. So that if you want to refer to it later, share it with another employee, forward to a colleague, uh, this recording will be available for you. So again, thanks for your time and let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is, okay, why would you want to look at proof stuff? And the main reason is this is what we found with our customers. This is how they currently proof items. They create a PDF or other file. They email that file to their customer. And again, this is just, this might vary from person to person, but this is typically what they do. They then wait on a customer approval. So they're waiting on the customer to respond to them. And they have to manually manage the entire process. That means that your salespeople and your artists are sending out approvals through their email. You're relying on those individuals to follow up on those proofs, et cetera. Um, and so that's how you currently proof things. Now, some of the use cases that you might have for, for doing uh, your approvals are, one, is you have artwork you want a customer to approve before you proceed with an order. And this is actually the most common use case or the most common reason why people might use proof stuff is for artwork approvals. Another reason is pricing. So let's just say you have a sales order, you have pricing on that sales order, and you want the customer to approve that pricing before you proceed. You might have shipping instructions on an order or other order details. It really doesn't matter what it is, but other order details, and you want the customer to sign off on them before you proceed. Another way our customers use proof stuff is on quotes. So they have a quote, and they use proof stuff to deliver that quote to their customer. And then they're notified when the customer approves or declines the quote. But really, it can be almost anything. So the, the uses of proof stuff um, are, are, can be almost anything. Now, let's look at a couple things that proof stuff is not good for. Uh, number one is if you have a multi-page document, so let's say I'm sending a five-page Word document to my customer, and I want the customer to initial each page. Proof stuff is not going to be good for that. Now, they can have them. You could have them approve or decline an entire document, but getting them to make initials on individual pages is not a feature within proof stuff. If you need any editing capabilities, so if you want the proof to be editable by the customer, uh, proof stuff is not good for that. It's also not good for multiple approvals. And what that means is I'm sending an approval, to, but I want that approval to go through a chain of people to make it approved or unapproved. Um, so proof stuff's not really good for that. Um, now, that doesn't mean you can't use it to send it to an organization. That organization can discuss it among themselves, and one person can then approve it. Proof stuff is good for that. But if you actually need to record multiple signatures, multiple approvals, proof stuff is not good for that. Now, here's the problems with the current method that you're using. So the method that you're currently using, uh, the first problem is you're emailing large files around. So if you have art files uh, and sometimes even approval files that you're sending to your customers, you're having to email them around. Um, customers are struggling with spam where they're not able to open files, and that then prompts them to call you or more emails back and forth. The whole concept here is we want to try to reduce the load on your staff, not increase it. So uh, sending approvals this way tends to actually cause more problems. Each person in your organization sends files a different way. So they might prepare the file a different way. They might send it a different way. What they say in the email might be different. 
And then you and your employees then have to manage the follow-ups. So that slows your entire production process. So all those emails that you're sending around, somebody has to be on top of those, make sure the customer is complying in enough time to, uh, to, to make sure that you get the order out on time or whatever else it is you're trying to do. And there's poor accountability. So if there's any sort of problem with the order, a lot of things that you'll hear from customers, I didn't get that, I didn't see that, I didn't mean that. Um, so there's just poor accountability in general uh, because it's back and forth. It's kind of a he said, she said kind of thing. And it makes it very hard to make your case to the customer that indeed it, what you provided is what they signed off on. And lastly, as your approval volume increases, so as you throughout your organization process more orders, uh, and you have more proofs associated with those orders, it just becomes unmanageable. The larger, the larger your organization, the more hands you have in the pot, if you will, salespeople, customer service people, uh, artists, these are kind of the people that are getting these approvals, and the more of those people you have, the more it becomes unmanageable. Okay, so that's kind of it for my slides for right now. Um, so let's kind of get into, let, let me show you how proof stuff works and how it can solve or get around these problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our on-site system. On-site is our uh, main product that we sell here at ShopWorks. It's the whole shop management program. And what I want to do is I want to do a real-world scenario here. So I want to take you through a sales order and then the different approvals you might have related to that sales order and then how that will work in conjunction with proof stuff. Remember, just keep in mind, these are just examples I'm giving you today. Um, you can use proof stuff for a lot of different things uh, that I'm not going to show you today, but this will give you a feel for the power of proof stuff, how it works, how you can tie it into sales orders. And just so you know, you do not have to have our on-site system to use proof stuff. Proof stuff can work by itself as a web standalone product. Um, I'm just showing it to you in conjunction with on-site so you can see it both ways, but you do not have to have on-site to use proof stuff. Okay, so in preparation for my webinar today, I've created a sales order. So I'm going to bring that sales order up. And I'm going to open up the sales order. It's for DC Special Olympics. Um, and what they, every year, my pretend company called Source Logo is my pretend screen printing and embroidery company. Uh, we do t-shirts for DC Special Olympics for their torch run. It's a big event, a lot of shirts. And what they would like us to do is they like us to come up with a bunch of different designs for them as potential designs. They then pick one of those designs, we refine it, and that becomes the final design. So there's kind of a double design process, if you will, with this particular customer on this particular event. Now, again, I'm going to show you an example today of a custom screen printing order. Proof stuff does not care if your orders are screen printing, embroidery, promotional products, ad specialties, uh, trophies and awards. It doesn't matter. So I'm just presenting it from one example today. So if we look at our order, we can see here uh, we're selling them 3,000 T-shirts. Um, I don't know the sizes yet. The customers just told me it's going to be about 3,000 T-shirts. I have some screen and art charges. I'm giving them some free art designs. And um, I'm just going to put a little note on here. Um, let me just add a note. Um, Uh, do not order uh, getting getting real getting sizes by uh, let's just say three uh, by four one nineteen. Do not order. So I'm just putting a note on there, and that note is just telling people don't order the garments yet. I want this order in there so that everybody knows it's on the schedule, but. Um, I'm also putting on there, don't order. Now, there's other things I could do. I could put the order on hold. I could also go into notes, and I could put those same notes to my purchasing department. So I could just add and uh, do not do not order until 4-1. So there's a couple different ways you can handle this within OnSite, just so you know. So I have my order. Now, for the design, my customers told me we're doing a front we're doing a back. They don't really know the number of colors, uh, and they don't really know what those colors are. So I'm a salesperson. I entered this order. I have a design in here, but I don't really know the design details. These will be filled out by an artist at a later date. So we uh, we kind of know what the shirt's going to be, 
but we don't know the details. So now what would happen is I would go over to print, and if you're using forms, I'd print out my forms. I would give those forms to my, at this point, I'd only give it to my, maybe my production manager to let them know it's coming, and to my art, art department because they need to work on this design for the customer. Um, now, you don't have to use forms. Some of our ShopWorks customers just use the, the system itself. So they would see in there that a new design, the artist would see a new design had be, been created, and they would start working on that design. So you got to do a little pretend with me here. And so pretend now time marches on, and it's a couple days later, and I'm now the artist. And the artist has decided that they want to send the customer a proof on this design. So they've come up with some designs, they want to present them to the customer, and they want to use proof stuff to do that. So what they're going to do is they're going to click on this little proof stuff tab. Again, we're doing this within on-site, and I'll show you in a minute here how we can also uh, do it within the, um, within the web browser. So I'm going to go ahead and add a proof. And I'm just going to put in here my proof name is my initial design. I'm not going to add any message to it. And you can see here, it's asking me what files do I want the customer to approve. So I'm sending them three different designs. So immediately I'm just going to add three different options here. So now I have three options. And on these options, I can add files from my computer. I can add a design from the on-site system. I can use a form or report from on-site. So th those are your different options. I also have down here, you'll see what kind of proof I'm sending. Single absolute or multiple. Single basically means they have to make a choice. So I'm going to present them with three options and they have to select from one of those options. Okay, so let's go with that option. Now I'm an artist, so I've already prepared my files in Photoshop or whatever digital, Corel Draw, Illustrator, whatever you use, and I've already created the file. So I'm going to say add file. I'm going to go to my uh, folder where I've created those files and I'm going to say uh, this is my torch run. Uh, one, I'm going to go here and say add another file. This is my option two. Now I'm doing, these are JPEG images. These could very easily be PDF files. They could be GIFs. They can be lots of different kinds of images or documents. They could be Word documents. So if I didn't want a naked image, if I wanted to have more stuff around it like the size, what the shirt is, um, I've seen all kinds of things, what the ink colors are. You can put all that in the approval if you want to. I'm just doing a simple example where I'm just, this is the initial design. I don't need to get real complicated with it. I just want my customer to approve the basic design that they want. And so then I'm going to add my third one. Now you'll see here a little thing next to each one, notes. So I'm just going to add a note to this third one that this is the option I prefer. Okay, I'm just going to leave that in there so the customer sees that. Um, you can see who the design's coming from, who the design's going to. I can change that information. Let's say Steve Hawker is the person who ordered the shirts, but there's somebody else that's doing the approval. So I could pick another contact uh, from my cut from my list for that particular customer or I could just type in a different name and email address But I'm gonna stick with Steve. Steve's the guy who's handling the order and so now I'm gonna go ahead and release the proof Now when I release the proof It is actually creating the proof online. So this is actually going out, you know over your internet connection it's creating the uh, proof or approval itself and in a second here um, it's going to allow us to send an email to our customer. Now, when we send this email to our customer, it's going to have, so you can see here, Steve Hawker. I can add some copy twos if I want to. Pick means pick our stock emails. So you can see I have a lot of stock emails. So here I have one called design approval. So when I select that, notice it dynamically filled in the information, design approval, Order number, hi Steve, here's your proof. Please get back to us as soon as possible. So you're going to want to use these um, stock email capability because it, I very quickly can fill out my, my email. And notice it has a link in there. It's not an attachment, it's just a regular link. So that means that uh, there's going to be less chance that 
Well, first of all, you're not sending large files around, number one. Number two is there's going to be less chance that your customer is, this is going to get caught up in their spam folder because um, there's not an attachment. So I'm going to go ahead and click on send now. Now, I don't have an email client set up on this computer, so I'm actually not going to click on send now. But pretend like you did. This email would go out to your customer. And now, if I come back in here, and uh, what well, you can see, there's the proof. So when I'm looking at this, this is actually looking out over the Internet, and it's, it's telling me what the ap approval or proof looks like. If your Internet's down, then you're not going to see this information. This is actually live connection to the Internet. Um, while you're an on-site. So now, I'm the artist. I just sent him the design. The customer now, again, pretend that I'm the customer now. We're changing roles. I'm the customer. And I've received the proof. So let's see what that looks like. Let's see what the customer sees. So the customer gets their email. They click on the link. And this is what they get. Uh, source logo. That's our company. That's our pretend company. It's branded. I can see proof is from. Me or uh, Jay Markinson, I'm Steve Hawker. I can see this. I can print this proof out if I want. And notice I can see instructions here, proof instructions to your customer, da, 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 do X, Y, Z. All this is customizable. You get to customize all this to, for how you want it for your customer. And so notice when I, my customer scrolls down, they can see the different designs. If they want to see a bigger view of the design, they click zoom in and they get a bigger picture of it. If they want to download these images, they can do that. And if they're ready to make a decision, they can do that. And notice you can see here, this is the option I prefer that presents to the customer. Okay, so now my customer and my customer decides that they want to make a decision, or let's say they just decide to sit on it for a while. Well, when a customer decides to sit on it for a while, what proof stuff does, let me, let me go over to the admin console. This is the proof stuff admin console. And let me log in here. Now remember, I'm I'm not Jay Malenga at Shopworks. I'm a pretend guy, Jay Markinson at the company Source Logo. And if I go in here and I go to proofs now and I see my open proofs. Oh, I forgot to, uh, I don't think these two accounts are linked together. So the problem is I, I should see that proof that I just created in here. The reason I don't see it is because this account is not linked with properly to this account. So what I would see is I would see this design, and I apologize for not setting this up correctly, but I would see this approval or this proof would be in my on-site system, but it would also be over here in my proof stuff. Now, another nice thing about proof stuff is the follow-ups. So your customer has not acted on it. If I go over to email, or notice on each proof, it shows me email sent, one, two, and three. That does not mean the email of when I sent them to notify them they got a proof. These are follow-up emails. So you can actually set up your proof stuff site where it will automatically send your customers a, a nudges to act on their proof. So we have it set up where our customers... If they have not acted on the proof in 24 hours, they receive one email that nudges them. If they haven't received it in 48 hours, they receive another nudge, which is maybe a little bit more aggressive. And then after 72 hours, we send them a third and final nudge that we're not going to be able to complete their order unless they get back to us. So proof stuff does that for you automatically. It's not something that you have to uh, manage yourself or do manually. And it's part of just kind of the automated follow-up that's built into proof stuff. So let's go here. Let's go back to our on-site. Let's go back to the customer approval. So now let's just say it's a couple days later. The customer received a email. They needed to act on their proof. They weren't going to get their order out on time. So now the customer finally acts on it. So they're going to go in here, and they have to pick one of these. They cannot select all of them. So before they can act on the approve, approve or decline it, they, or actually to decline, they don't select anything, they just decline. But if they want to approve something, they click on it, and then they click approve. So I'm forcing them to choose one of these three. So I'm going to click on approve. 
I'm going to put in my name here. Remember, I'm Steve at the customer. DC Special Olympics. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off on it. I'm going to go ahead and approve this. Now, this is only the initial design. And they get a little confirmation message. And once I do that, uh, two things happen. One is, well, a couple things happen. First of all, this proof can no longer be acted on. So an uh, uh, approval or proof can only be acted on once. If the customer had declined this and had requested some changes, okay, I would be notified of those changes and then I would, I would, I would prepare a second proof. But whenever a customer acts on a proof, two things happen. They get an email and you get an email with the details of what happened. So your artist, whether the customer approves or declines an approval, your artist or customer service reps or whoever's sending out the proof is getting notified that when the proof is acted on, whether it's approved or declined, the customer receives a record of that as well. And of course, uh, we timestamp, the proof is timestamped with the date, the time, the IP address, and the signature of who approved or declined the proof. Now, some of these features you can turn off. So, for example, if you didn't want to require the signature, you can turn that off. Most people do require it, but if you didn't want to, you have the option of shutting that off. Um, same thing for the recording of the IP address. Most people leave those features on because that just gives you a little bit more uh, evidence, if you will. If a customer of yours disputes something, um, then you have proof that it actually happened. Okay, now let's say, um, okay, so we've got the art approved. The customer selected the general design, but uh, maybe we're going to do some more tweaks to it. So now the artist is working on that. So now I'm the customer service rep. And as the customer service rep, I'm going to go ahead and send them a copy of the, of the order. Let's say they've gotten back to me now and they've given me the sizes. So I want to put in here the real sizes on the order. So uh, we've got, uh, I'm going to make up these numbers, of course, 1750 on the largest. Um, let's say, um, oh, my math is never going to be good on this. 2000 on the extra larges, um, 800 on the larges, and um, 200 on the mediums. And let's say they ordered 50 small, so they actually ordered a little bit more than we originally thought. Price doesn't change, 399 I want my customer to sign off on all this. I want him to sign off, agree to this. I'm going to get rid of, delete this line. Um, so I'm going to go over to print. I'm going to select what forms I want to print. Well, first of all, I want to print an invoice. So if I scroll down here, I have an invoice. I'm going to select that. Um, I also want to select a um, shipping information for him. I want to, I want to make sure he told me that um, we're going to ship to their main office and we're going to ship at UPS Ground Commercial and that's fine. We're just going to leave it like that. But I want him to sign off on that. I want him to, I want him to agree that that's where we're shipping it to. If I was doing a commercial trucking, I could put that in there, whatever information you want. So I'm going to go back over to proof stuff or excuse me, to print. And now I'm going to, I'm going to say I want to print out the shipping spec by address. Oops, I tried to print it. Cancel that. I just want to select that. So I'm going to send him the invoice and the shipping spec by address. Let me see what my shipping spec by address is. So yeah, we're shipping everything to a single address. That's what this is showing us. We could do multiple addresses if we wanted, but in this case, I'm just going to do a single address. So that's the forms I'm going to be sending him, but I want him to sign off on it. So I'm going to go back to proof stuff. I'm going to, um, and actually what I'm going to do is let's print this out first. I'm going to PDF this. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, DC Special Olympics approval and today's date. Okay. That's going to create my PDF for me because I'm not going to do this out of on-site. I want to do it from the website, but I want to show you how it works. So this is what our uh, our invoice looks like. Now the invoice would have your logo on it, not this on-site logo. And if I scroll down, I can see the shipping spec. It's telling where we're shipping all the product to 
And um, so we're sending them one PDF document that's an invoice plus their shipping information. Now let's save this uh, to my desktop. I'll save it to Scratchpad. Okay, so just so I know where to find it. All right, so now let's go over to the web browser. Remember, I'm now I'm not the customer anymore. I'm the I'm the customer service rep at the company source logo. So I'm going to add a new proof, and the first thing I'm going to do, so I'm just I'm creating a proof just like I did in OnSite, but now I'm doing it from the web because remember, proof stuff work can work with any software that you use. It can work with QuickBooks. It can work with uh, any software that you use, you can generate documents that you can then use in conjunction with proof stuff. So I'm going to choose my customer. I'm going to select the customer if I wanted to create a new customer, but I'm going to select a customer because I already have Steve Hawker in here. So there he is, Steve from DC Special Olympics. That's who I want to send the approval to. Now I'm going to go to step two. I'm going to create the proof. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the order ID here. The order ID is 3506. If you're using QuickBooks or whatever else you're using, that's the order ID you would use. So 3506, proof name is order approval. Now, I'm only sending them one thing, but I'm going to show you what an absolute approval is. An absolute approval is if I present them with multiple things. So let's say um, I presented him with, and actually, let me... I'm going to make this order approval and art. So I'm going to do a double approval. I'm going to send them the order, and I'm going to send them my artist has finished the final artwork, and I want my customer to sign off on both of those. So it's going to be order approval and art approval. Optional proof message, I'm going to leave it. Absolute means that they must approve or decline everything that's on that proof. And let me just continue forward. I think it'll illustrate how it works. So add items to the proof. The first item I'm going to add is, um, let's see here. I'm going to go to my scratch pad, and I'm going to add my order approval. Okay. Now, I can change the file name, so I'm going to say order approval. Okay. I'm going to add another item, and I'm going to send them my artwork, uh, t-shirt back, final, as one image, so I'm going to call that final shirt back, I'm going to add another proof item, and we want to set them the front, I'm going to call that final shirt front. It defaults to the file name, but I'm just making it more uh, customer friendly. Now, if I want to see any of these, I can zoom in on them. So there's my front design. You can see it changed from what they originally improved because that was just the initial design. I'm going to look at the back. Okay, I like that. And I can uh, view the, um, the PDF as well. Okay, so let's do all that. Now I'm going to say let's send the email. And I can select an email template just like it that works in on-site. You can see we have one, uh, a generic email made, and it fills in with their information. It fills in with their URL. And now I would click Send Email. Now, if you want to, you, you have a couple options here. You can send the email from our proof stuff address, or you can send the email from your local email client. So if I was using Outlook or uh, Thunderbird or some other local email program, I could select on send from my local email client and send it. Now, again, I'm not going to send it in this case, but you would, you would do so. All right, so now I'm going to go back to my proofs and look at my open proofs. And now you can see there is the approval that we just created. Now, notice a couple things. <coughs> Excuse me. First of all, no emails have been sent. That doesn't mean the initial email to the customer hasn't been sent. These are the follow-up emails. So no follow-up email has been sent to the customer. That's because we're within 24 hours. So he's just received it. We're giving him 24 hours to act before we send that, him that reminder. Now let's look at what the customer sees. When the customer clicks on that link, this is what they see. Again, our logo is at the top. Dear customer, uh, 
here's the proof instructions. Now notice that these proof instructions are different than the other proof instructions. And that's because you can vary the proof instructions by proof type. So you can change it. Looks a little bit different. Remember on the previous proof, we had them select each item. They had to pick one of the three. In this one, there's no picking any of them. They're approving or declining everything. Okay? So let's say that in this case, the customer doesn't like this uh, proof. There, there's something wrong with it. Now, it could be the front. It could be the back. It could be the, the order. So they're going to decline it. And so notice that there's a, a message here. Again, this message is customizable by you. So um, pricing is incorrect. I spoke to Jay, and the price is supposed to be uh, $3.90 per shirt. So he's having a price problem. If he wanted something modified on the design, he could type that in as well. So again, Steve Hawker. Put in his email address. And Steve is going to sign off on it. And he declines it. Now, again, once he declines it, this proof cannot be acted on. Okay, you can still see it in your system. It's still there. The proof never goes away. I have the approval information on it, but I can see all the items have been declined. You received an email. Your customer received an email. So now, okay, I got to send them another approval. So, and by the way, if I go over here into, into orders in my on-site system, if, if these were properly linked together, I would see, if I go to all, I would see all those approvals in there. So, um, oh, and there I do see them. Okay, so they are linked together properly. I, I spoke incorrectly. So I can see in here, we have one uh, approved. The initial design was approved. The final order approval and art approval was declined. Okay, so I can, so even though this was created on the web, it still shows in my on-site system. Okay, so now I need to modify my price. So he seemed fine with the artwork. So I'm going to change this to 390. Okay, I'm going to go back to proof stuff. Now this in this this time I'm just going to send it from the on-site system. And hopefully what you can see is that if you are using on-site in conjunction with proof stuff, it's a little bit smoother process, a little bit easier than if you're just using the web product. But if you're not using on-site, then obviously that's not going to work for you. So I'm going to add my proof. I'm going to call this final approval. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I, I want him to sign off with the designs again anyhow. So I'm just going to do uh, my three again. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is my form. And I'm going to do my invoice and my shipping spec. Um, let's say I, I don't want him to approve the shipping spec this time. He's already approved it, so I'm going to sign off on that. So I'm just going to insert my invoice. Okay, there's my invoice he's going to sign off on with the modified pricing. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my files again. So I'm going to do, uh, got to navigate to the right spot. This is my artwork. So I'm going to do a final shirt back. And here I'm going to do a final shirt front. Now, down here under type, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the third type of approval. So the third type of approval is multiple. And multiple means they can, they can say yes or no to any of these items. So let's go ahead and release this. I'm going to release it to the customer. Um, I'm going to start skipping over steps here just to keep the webinar moving along. But you can see here I'm, I'm creating the approval. Then I would email them the approval. I'm going to skip that step. And then I want to show you... You can see now that shows an open approval in our system, and I'm going to show you what the customer sees. So what the customer sees is they see different proof instructions, because remember, these can vary by proof type, and they see each of the different items that we have sent to them, but they can approve or decline any of those items. So they can say, uh, I approve this, Jay fixed the pricing, so that's good. Uh, I approve this, but I, I want the blue person to be changed to red. So I could say decline, 
Why am I trying to change, change person to red? Oh, no, I changed my mind. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and approve it as blue. Okay. So in this case, I'm gonna approve all those items and then I have to click submit. Now I'm gonna put in my name. Again, email address. And I'm going to sign it. And again, once I've signed it, just like before, the proof is you can't act on it anymore. However, the customer gets emailed a copy for their record. You have an email copy for your records. And then all that stuff is recorded behind the scenes. So now if I go back to my on-site system and I refresh this page, you can see here now that I'm getting a complete history on that order of the approvals. I, I, I sent him one approval, but I retired it, meaning I never sent it to the customer. I made a mistake. Then I sent him the initial design, which he approved. Then I sent him an order and art approval, which he declined. And then I sent a final approval, which he approved. If I click on this little button here, it gives me the details. Approved, what dates they approved, who it was approved by. And, of course, I can always go look at the proof, and you have all the details there as well. So that's basically the life cycle of a proof, approvals, and how it works. Um, if I go back over here to my, my web side of it, um, and let's go ahead and refresh this, um, I won't see that anymore because it's not an open proof. So, if, But if I went back to advanced search, okay, I could say, um, I could do a search. So show me all proofs that were, uh, the date action was today. And here's all the proofs that were acted on today. Um, if I go over to back to my proof section and say my open proofs, um, if I want to, I'm an individual salesperson or an artist, and I want to follow up on my proofs that are outstanding, I can go to my proof stuff uh, console here. I can view my open proofs. Now, we've sent these all three emails, but they're still not responding. So maybe I need to call these people. Okay. So it does maintain a list for you of unapproved or unacted upon proofs uh, for you to follow up on if it gets beyond doing the emails. Proof stuff will do up to three of these emails, three follow-up emails. And just to, clear, just to make sure you understand, all of this is customizable. The colors are customizable. The logo is customizable. Your instructions are customizable. When someone approves or declines, the message that you send to them, if they were to decline this, this is customizable. I'm not going to show you all that in this webinar. It's simple administrative stuff. Um, but you do have control over all those things uh, when you're using proof stuff. Okay, so what are the benefits of proof stuff? Hopefully you've seen these today. It's a simple email to your customer with no attachments. Uh, you're doing, you're providing your customer with a consistent and professional presentation because you're doing it through a website instead of via email. The proof that you present to them is done in a professional manner. Uh, proof stuff provides automatic customer reminders to act, so you don't have to do that manually. You and the customer receive notifications when the customer does act. And there's customer accountability, including an optional signature. So proof stuff protects you a lot in cases of customers lodging complaints, et cetera, that aren't valid. Um, I'm getting ready to wrap up the presentation here. I have a couple more slides to show you. Um, if you'd like to ask a question about proof stuff, Now's the time to do so. In a minute or two here, I will uh, answer those questions, then we'll wrap things up. Before we do that, just a little bit about ShopWorks, the company. We have been in business for 20 years. We have installed our software for over 1,100 companies in our industry, and we only service this industry, and our industry is the embellished product industry, and that's decorated apparel companies, promotional products companies, awards and promotions companies, digital printing companies, and really you can use on-site for a lot more than that. And very importantly, um, all ShopWorks products are designed, supported, and serviced in the United States. Now, proof stuff, uh, if you're wondering about how much it costs, how, how do I get started with it, it, our pricing is very simple. It's not based on your number of users. 
it's just based on $75 per month. It's a flat fee. Now that gets you up to 1,000 proofs in a month. Now you might say, well, what if I need more than 1,000 proofs? If you need more than 1,000 proofs, we have additional pricing. I think uh, the next step up is uh, maybe it takes you to $125, is up to 2,000. Then we have another level after that. We don't have many customers who are, who are past that. We do have a 60-day free trial of proof stuff. There's no long-term commitment. So you can do the 60-day free trial. You get it for two months for free. You don't pay a dime. If you start using it, you get three months in. You say, gosh, this just isn't working for us. You shut it off, no problem. Then you want to, let's say you get three months down the road. Yeah, gosh, maybe we do want to use proof stuff. You can turn it back on again. So there's no long-term commitment, 60-day free trial. Uh, if you want that, you go to shopworks.com. Uh, let me just show you the website. Um, let's close this down. If you go to our website, shopworks.com, and you just go to products and proof stuff, uh, we tell you more about proof stuff here. Um, so uh, you can see a, a video on how it works. Um, if you want to do the 60-day free trial, you can call us at this number. You can also just click request an evaluation or contact us. And if you see contact us right here, and just tell us that you want to try proof stuff. So you don't have to call us. You can call us if you want, or you can just use the contact us button or request evaluation button. Any of those will work. And again, 60-day free trial. Um, we do have other products available on site. I showed you a little bit of that today. That's our core product that's used to manage your entire business. Proof stuff I showed you today, which is the proofing product, can work on its own. And then we have manage orders. Manage orders is a customer portal, meaning customers log in and check on their own orders and pay for orders and do stuff like that. That's an add-on product to on site. So it's kind of part of on site. Um, so that's kind of our family of products. Okay, I see, uh, again, if you have any questions, now is the time to ask them. Marcus is asking a question. Are blind proofs available to be forwarded on to an end user? For instance, we're a contract decorator and our customer may, may want to have their customer see it. Yes, um, that, that's correct. When you do um, blind proofs can be forwarded to the end customer or end user. And we have many of our customers who are using proof stuff who are uh, contract decorators. They don't want their logo all over everything. Um, so you do have that option uh, within proof stuff that can be sent blind. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Only the one came in from Marcus. Um, here's one from David. Um, when the customer approves one part and declines another, what does that look like? Okay, that's a good question. So let's go over to our proof stuff. Um, let's see here. Um, let me look at my advanced search. Date of action today. So here's all the ones that were acted on today. Um, this was the final approval. Let's look at that one. This was the one. So this is the type that you're asking about, uh, David, where it's uh, multi, they can approve or decline each item. So all that would happen is, Basically, it looks the exact same as it does right now, except you'd see one of these would have the, the red um, declined by it. So you would see on here, this has been approved, this has been approved, and this has been declined. So that's really the only chance. I mean, the only change, excuse me. Um, whichever item is declined, or if, if two were declined, or if all of them were declined, that would show next to each item. The approval or declined portion is next to each item. Um... What about the field that shows who the proof is from? This question is from Marcus. Um, oh, in a blind situation. Um, yeah, I think it. I think it. I, I'd have to. I think it either gets peeled off of there. I think it gets removed, Marcus. I would have to uh, play around with that. Sorry, I don't have an exact answer for you. I'd have to. I think it either peels it off or it changes it to who is the customer who's forwarding it. It's one of those two. Um, so I'll have to look at that. Um, Scott asked a question that he, well, he said a statement. He used approved stuff. When will the date created tab be fixed? Uh, I'm not sure about that one. I'll have to, Scott, I'm, I'd have to forward that one to support, which I will do so. And you also asked another question about 
uh, customers trouble loading proofs from the link. Um, the loading proofs th from the link is a known issue. It happens sporadically because we're supporting a bunch of different web browsers and we use um, Google Docs for presenting documents. Um, in the last couple weeks, we've made a change to that so that um, you should see an, an increase in the openability of the links. Also, if your customers just hit the refresh button, it'll fix it. But I realize that you know they, they're not always going to do that. So if they refresh it, first of all, the, the problem's been fixed as, as much as we can fix it because we are relying on Google Docs. It's a Google Docs imp, uh, issue, not a, not a proof stuff issue, but we do use Google Docs. So answer number one is that has been uh, addressed. Answer number two is if they refresh it, it will fix it, will fix it even if even before on the, on the older, before we fix it, it would fix it. So that's kind of my answer for you there. Um, ba -ba -bum. In on-site, will it show approved or declined? David asks. So in on-site, what happens is um, it will show partial. So the status can be approved, declined, or partial. So in this final approval, if two of the three or one of the three items had been approved, I would see partial here. It will be yellow and partial. Marcus asks, am I correct in counting three proofs created by you today for one single order? Therefore, you'd count as three proofs created for billing purposes. That's right. So each of these counts as one proof for billing purposes. Um, so, I mean, if you're concerned about that, one of the things you can do is, you know, send proofs together and just do a multi-proof. So, for example, in this final approval, I, I actually included three different items, uh, two, two designs and an order approval. And so that'll cut down on your number of proofs. It's not the items that are in the proof, it's the proofs. So, but that, yeah, that is how the proofs are counted. Scott asks, are there any plans to increase the size limit? It's what, one megabyte. Actually, that's been increased to two megabytes. So the size limit on files is two megabytes, not one megabyte. It used to be one megabyte. Um, you know, the thing about proof stuff is that um, it's not really intended to be sending camera-ready files to people. So the idea is they should be low-resolution files, whether they're PDFs or whatever you send them. Um, so that might get increased to past two megabytes in the future. I don't know. But right now we're at two megabytes, and we kind of best practices, you know, advise people that uh, their file sizes should be small if possible. Um, when they're viewing, what does it look like for when customers view a PDF? Well, let's go take a look. So if they're viewing a PDF, you know, they kind of get a preview of it on the screen. They can click on the zoom button. That lets them zoom in on just on that image. But if I click on this, it pops it out as another tab. It actually just opens it up. So you can see that's now a, it's a PDF. And they can download that. Um, they can view it, zoom in, print it, all the different kind of things they want to do. Uh, Marcus asks, when a proof is approved, does it update order status? In Shopworks, it does not um, because it's it's too complicated. Um, what I mean by that is, so you get into these scenarios where some of these proofs have art attached to it, some of them have order attached to it, some have art and order, some are declined, some are approved, some are partial. So on-site has an order approval, it has a design approval. Well, the order approval is actually a custom status, so it's. There's too many scenarios. It's it's just basically unprogrammable for uh, on-site to know based on the combination of proofs, what's in the proof, if it was an art proof or a design proof, if that's going to affect the design status or order approval status. So our best practices is that you're going to get email reminders, you know, when people approve things. And so in that case, you know, your, your artist or your customer service rep is going to go into the system and, and update it in on-site. So that's basically how that works currently. And I don't foresee that changing in the future uh, unless we dramatically change how we do orders and design statuses because and, and the proofs too because it's uh, very difficult to link the two together. Uh, David asks, if you forget to add the order number and the proof is approved, can you add the order number later so it syncs with on-site? Um, I don't believe so, but that's actually uh, maybe a good suggestion. Um, let me look here. So if we go into proofs, um, yeah, there's. I don't see any current way to add an order number to an approval. But I'm gonna. That's a good one. Should be something. Um, surprised nobody's asked for that before. Um, 
or maybe they have. I'll have to look into that. So I will forward that on to the dev team. But because this is a web-based product, it's pretty easy to make changes. So unlike our on-site system where we have to send out upgrade files, et cetera, it's kind of a bigger deal. Um, proof stuff is because it's a completely 100% web-based, it's easier to make changes. So I will forward that one to the dev staff. Marcus asks, can the frequency of when the follow-up emails be less than 24 hours? Yes. It's a, syst it's a setting that you make. It's not an order-based setting, no. It's a system-wide setting that you make, but you can make it whatever you want. So if you want to make it 12 hours or if you want to do uh, 24 hours on the first one, then two days on the second one and three days on the third one, you can do it that way. So you set it up by, but it's for all of your customers, for all of your approvals. It's not different based on customer. That's just a uh, level of complexity or on the order now. It's just done done system-wide. Um, that's how the, the reminders are sent. Um, all right. Well, good questions, everyone. Um, I appreciate your time today. Um, this is a recorded webinar. I'll send you a link to where it is if you want to, again, view it yourself or share with a colleague or coworker. I appreciate your time. If you're an existing customer, thank you for your business. If you're a prospect looking at our line of products, uh, we encourage you to contact us and we can walk you through some of those. And, um, I'm going to have to wrap up here, but thanks for everybody's time and um, we'll see you in the next webinar. Thank you.